Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Aziza Munir. And today we'll be talking about business research methods. Well, that is in continuation with the series which we have started a couple of um, lectures before. So um, the purpose of discussing uh, this stream is to analyze that which type of research methodologies, which type of uh, business research areas need to be focused while anal analyzing uh, the um, um, uh, quantitative approaches. That once you, um, once you are not aware that which type of uh, material, which type of data can be with you and how it can be with you in order to uh, address a problem, in order to fix a problem basically, then how, will, how can you apply these quantitative approaches? And even if you are applying these quantitative uh, techniques, still you need to analyze that, uh, still you need to think that the um, uh, interpretation wala element or the uh, worth of the uh, solution ki wo kitni hai. So for these purposes, we have identified that uh, we have to touch the research orientation and th that is the third lecture for the research purpose that we need to know, we need to analyze that which type of areas need to be addressed at the time of uh, collecting data and at the time of um, uh, manipulating a problem. So in today's lecture, we will be talking about that how we can classify business research. That um, uh, if, uh, if we are quite much aware of the concept that what is business research, then we should know that uh, which type of uh, classification can be conducted on the basis of this research. Meaning if we are categorizing them, if we are analyzing them on prim primarily basis, preliminary basis, meaning that we are analyzing them that uh, in which uh, box we will be uh, opening towards uh, uh, taking the solution of the set problem. So that particular box is the category which we'll be talking about today. Secondly, we'll be analyzing that what is the need and importance of analyzing, of conducting this uh, um, um, business research towards the decision making, which is the key function of um, uh, any uh, quantitative approach of any, uh, you can say, um, uh, uh, the business um, uh, problem that what, what will be the decision, what will be the selection of an alternative uh, towards which we are talking about. So if we are selecting any particular alternative, if we are picking any particular option amongst the multiple set of options, then we should have a valid reason or we should have a proof that why we are going towards, we are, why we are going through uh, this area, why we are going through towards this alternative in terms of selection. So uh, what is the worth of uh, business research in taking a decision? That is something which is our area of discussion today. And then uh, we will be um, creating an association between the decision-making alternatives with that of researcher at each stage of, stage of decision-making. Well, uh, uh, each stage of uh, uh, business research. That whenever we are talking about business research, we have analyzed them, we have um, plot them on a specified uh, processes areas. So if we have identified multiple set of processes in, 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 in defining the research met, uh, methodology, then we have to address that what is the need and importance of this decision making alternative towards uh, that particular process. Ki har process ke andar se hum uh, decision ko kis tarha se analyze karenge, usme decision ki kya importance hai, that will be our area of discussion today. So, Starting, about, uh, starting from the decision-making perspective, the decision-making is a process of resolving a problem or choosing among alternative opportunity. Uh, that basically we, in, in a decision, we have to focus that what is um, a problem and how we, uh, we will be addressing a problem in terms of choosing the right option which is presented to us. So there will be multiple set of alternatives which are um, exposed to us or the researcher might identify multiple uh, set of alternatives on the basis of which the problem can be solved. But which um, a subset of or you can say that which set of alternative is providing the best solution towards the set problem will be a critical task. So you have to select, you have to identify that area, you have to focus towards that portion uh, on which um, uh, basically, uh, there is sound evidence, there is sound proof uh, towards addressing a problem. Secondly, the key to decision, ma to decision making is to recognize the nature of problem or opportunity. So therefore, 
uh, as we have already uh, taken into account that decision making is um, uh, enjoys the, the function of or enjoys the opportunity of the major important uh, area on the basis of which the problem is addressed. So uh, what is in order to recognize the problem you have to recognize the importance of the problem as well as the um, uh, alternative on which uh, you are deciding uh, the particular problem to be solved. Then we have to identify that how much information is available and recognize what, what information is needed. So in that case, uh, we should know that we have which information available hai, or which information required hai basically. So decision making ke, um, continuum we discuss karte hai, decision making ke area we focus on the area, we analyze karte hai, that which type of um, information is already with us and on the basis of given information which type of results can be taken so uh, where the area is lacking so where is where is the is the point on the basis of which we uh, need to collect some more information so uh, once we are analyzing the uh, problem we should be uh, we are actually able uh, enough to identify the current level of information and the required one so if there exists a gap between uh, then we will be identifying multiple sources of collecting this information and um, um, analyzing this, um, um, interpreting this information towards making certain sound conclusions. So every business problem or decision making situation can be classified on a continuum uh, ranging from complete satanity to complete ambiguity. So this is a continuum which describes the uh, situation towards making a decision. In the center you are seeing uh, the satanity, that if a researcher is too much certain about a particular problem um, um, information that th this is the pr this is the problem and this is the uh, current information uh, which we are having and this might be the information which we are requiring and this can be collected handily meaning handy meaning uh, there is no point of um, there is no need of conducting research if you are very much certain that how to fix a problem so problems might be there in in any business environment but if uh, on the basis of the available data and on the basis of, of the exp experience and expertise you used to identify that how much you are certain about the problem solution so for that purpose you have to uh, you will be uh, analyzing the level of certainty that uh, if, if you are very much certain about any uh, about the solution of the problem then there is no need of conducting research we'll look into the details of certainty uh, in a moment and let's decide let's discuss the extreme situations which uh, uh, exist on this continuum, the ex extreme situations have um, the absolute ambiguity on right side and a complete uh, uncertainty on the left side. So that should be complete uncertainty. This is complete uncertainty. So there exists complete uncertainty if, uh, uh, if in that case. So that is something which uh, in which is uh, which which shows that there exists certain kind of uh, um, um, information which is with us, and there might be certain information which can be collected um, uh, through through conducting research. Whereas on the other extreme, on right hand side, which is a absolute ambiguity, shows that uh, there is there exists cer certain areas. Uh, there exist certain elements which are very much ambiguous in nature. So there is lack of information or uh, there is something which is missing uh, in order to describe, in order to define the current problem. So in that case, uh, you are a little bit, you know, um, doubted that what to select and what to not. So that, uh, that is something which is... Um, this continuum basically describes that in the middle the researcher is holding satanity in which uh, he is very much sure that uh, how to solve a problem. On the left extreme there ex uh, exists uh, complete uncertainty and on the right one there is complete ambiguity and on both the cases we need to conduct research. Now in case of satanity um, it means that the decision maker has all the information that he or she needs that uh, we have taken um, an assumption that whatever is required to solve this particular issue, this particular problem is already with us. And the decision maker knows the exact nature of business problem or opportunity. So therefore, in case of satanity, the researcher is having a grip over the problem. 
he is very much sure, he is very much, um, uh, you can say, focused that uh, what is the um, nature of the problem and how this uh, particular area can be solved. Might be the researcher is very much um, experienced and uh, he is al uh, already very much trained to solve the kind of issues which, uh, which are addressed here. So um, there lies very uh, less, um, you can say, margin to, uh, uh, to collect some data and analyze that. So um, uh, the decision maker knows the exact nature of business problem or opportunity. For example, an airline may need to know the dem demographic characteristics of its pilots. This means that the airline has many pilots in the demographic areas so that they can interpret the right results. Uh, the firm knows exactly which information is required and from where it can find it can be find. So, if we have a firm that knows which problem is and which information is needed, and where can we find it? So, it means that we don't need to undergo a very detailed process. We are already very much aware that from where we can get the right data and how to fix that problem. So, if we are much aware that from where we can get the right data and how to fix that problem. So, if a manager is uh, so certain about the problem or opportunity and the future outcomes as well, then research may not be needed at all. But this kind of um, uh, perfect situations won't exist in uh, the um, uh, dynamic business environment. So usually the satanity um, is, is, uh, is an issue which, is, which lacks in a kind of a business environment. So whenever we are very much sure about a problem, this is a very uh, limited situation or we cannot predict uh, on that particular situation um, about the future circumstances. That this particular area will affect future in which circumstances, in which, a, in which domain. So that is something which is a little bit, you know, a question mark that um, uh, will this situation exist in future or not. So that is something uh, which uh, rarely exists and uh, that is why we won't focus on certainty towards making a decision making. Then comes the complete instantaneity. It means that all the managers grasp the general nature of the objectives they wish to obtain, but the information about the alternatives in, in, is incomplete. So therefore, we know the uh, nature of the problem in detail, that what actually is required and what is the purpose of uh, uh, this area to be solved, but we are slightly unaware, we are slightly, uh, you know, um, uh, blank towards analyzing the set of alternatives. So we need some information in order to describe the alternative patterns. So predictions about the forces that will uh, shape future events are educated guesses. So all the predictions and all the elements that we have in future research ke andar, um, uh, support or uh, support uh, provide, karte hai, wo basically a uh, uh, general uh, educated guess. Ho sakta hai. So for that purpose, we need certain kind of uh, data or we need certain kind of material on the basis of which we can evidently uh, place uh, a kind of, uh, you, you can say, we can evidently place um, uh, the, uh, the issue in a way that we, can, we are very much certain towards uh, uh, the solution because we are holding this much data with us. So that is something which provides us the um, um, back, uh, backbone, which provides us the support and that is something which is required for uh, which is the only purpose of collecting the data. So um, under conditions of uncertainty, effective managers recognize potential value in spending additional time gathering information to clarify the nature of problem. So in that particular situation, whenever there is a gap between uh, the problem as well as the given set of information, the manager uh, is forced to or the manager is compelled to analyze the problem towards collection of uh, multiple kind sets of data and combining them, integrating them, putting them in a meaning form and uh, generalizing a conclusion. Then comes the uh, right extreme of the uh, research of the decision making which is the absolute ambiguity. In case of absolute ambiguity, uh, the nature of problem to be solved is unclear. So in previous case, we know the nature of problem, we know the objectives which we are required to solve, but we are unaware, we are slightly uh, doubted that whether the given information is, uh, give, is complete with us or not. But in this situation, we are not able to identify the problem or the nature of problem on its own. So therefore, this situation is somehow more critical in nature. That when we uh, are actually facing a kind of problem in which we cannot define that what is the nature of problem. So in that case, the absolute ambiguity arises. 
the objectives are vague and the alternatives are difficult to uh, decline. So therefore in that situation when we are holding a kind of uh, uh, environment in which we are, you know, we can hardly define our problem at first and secondly we cannot identify that which might be the alternatives we will be looking for uh, the solution towards. So that is something which in which we have uh, actually declined the set of alternatives. We have not measured them, we have not pinpointed them uh, as such. So this is so far considered as the uh, most difficult situation of taking a decision. So in this kind of situation, uh, we hardly uh, face um, um, positive results. So that is something which is a difficult situation to answer. But even if this kind of situation arises, the manager uh, or the effective management uh, can analyze that what is being provided to us can uh, shape or can um, uh, can be focused towards the solution in terms of data collection. So uh, even on the basis of um, ambiguous nature of problem, we can address at least the nature of the problem in a fine way. So the effective management should at first address towards the um, uh, defining the problem and then towards its solution. So as situation moves farther along the scale towards ambiguity, the need to spend additional time on business research becomes more compelling, which states that we have to focus on both the areas. We have to analyze the um, uh, business uh, um, a problem at first and then we will be moving towards the solution because we are uh, not aware of, we are not completely um, uh, focused towards the nature of the problem. So therefore we are finding ourselves in difficult position to describe the research objectives and the possible outcome on which we will be looking at. So uh, at first we have to pay attention towards the, um, uh, towards addressing the problem and then towards its solution. So that is something which is a dual um, uh, purpose task or dual importance task in which uh, we have to resolve the ambiguity of the nature of problem at first and then move towards its solution. Now uh, a business, um, uh, now we, we are in a position that if we have identified the continuum of uh, decision making, now we are in a position to describe that which type of business researches exists currently. So uh, business research produces information that reduce uncertainty. Up to now, we have clear three things clear. Uh, one very important is that what is actually a decision making and what is the need and purpose of taking a decision in a business environment. Which, what is the decision making continuum and uh, uh, why we actually need to execute, we need to undergo a research technique because if we are not certain about any particular problem, we, are, we might be uncertain. So if we are uncertain, we know the nature of the problem but we don't, don't need, the, but we, don't, uh, we are not aware of the um, alternatives which can uh, provide us with the solution. And on the other end, we are uh, in fact not aware of the nature of the problem as, as well. So in that cases, we need to conduct research. We need to produce certain kind of information which reduces the level of uncertainty. And if the level of uncertainty reduces, it will definitely move towards the certainty in which we are identifying the right alternatives towards the right selection of uh, the um, uh, right selection of the alternative and taking the right decision for the future problems. Secondly, it helps uh, focus decision making, meaning all the types of researches um, uh, focus this decision making per, uh, perspective. Thirdly, the business research, the researchers exactly know what their problems are and design studies to test specific hypotheses. So, uh, when we business research, ki baat karte hai, to these uh, the business, business researchers are uh, those qualified and trained people who uh, not only uh, knows the problem, but they can create a design, they can create a research design on the basis of the given problem and present it in the form of hypothetical statements. And these hypothetical statements are then um, uh, testified, are then tested on the basis of specific level of confidence and with um, um, uh, specific degrees of freedom by analyzing its critical value to, uh, to whether accept that uh, hypothetical statement or not. So that is something which is purely in the domain of a researcher that how to uh, initiate research on the basis of this design. So th this design technique needs primarily the question that which type of research we are about to conduct. So that is something which is the major domain of uh, interest of a researcher. For example, a software, uh, a soft drink company introducing a new iced coffee might want to know whether a gold or silver label 
would make packaging more attractive. So here a problem address has been addressed. Here a simple area has been told that a company has made soft drinks and has to introduce a new product which is cold coffee. And on the label of cold coffee, they want to analyze that on the packaging, they put a label of golden color or silver color which will be more attractive. So what might be the more important area towards taking the attraction or taking the attention of the consumers towards packaging only. So that is something which is about to discuss in this problem. So here we will have a very clear idea of what the researcher will have to address and on the basis of this problem we will design the solution and describe the solution and it will be related to the research design. Similarly, we will have to discuss the research design and the research design. Similarly, एक और एग्जांपल देखते हैं कि अ मैनेजर आईडेंटिफाइज अ ड्रास्टिक इंक्रीज इन एन इन एन इन एब्सेंटीज्म व्हिच हैज ग्रेटली अफेक्टेड द प्रोडक्टिविटी बट नॉट फुली अवेयर ऑफ ऑल द पॉसिबल कॉज़ेस ऑफ एब्सेंटीज्म इस केस में जो रिसर्चर है उसके पास इनकम्प्लीट इनफॉरमेशन है मीनिंग that he is very much aware that on certain time period the employees have shown the result of absenteeism, meaning they are not coming at their job points and they are taking leaves and they are taking holidays. So for that purpose, one area is totally analyzed that the productivity is getting affected with the increased rate of absenteeism. But why this absenteeism is increasing? So that is something which it which is the area which need to be addressed by the researcher and this area need to be explored. हमें मालूम नहीं है अभी तक के absenteeism जो है वो किस तरह से increase हो रहा है Yes, it is increasing, which is why the productivity is affected in the given example. But why is absenteeism happening? It can't be sitting down and sitting down. Definitely, there will be no solid reasons and there will be no solid cues. It can be that the turnover is increasing or it can be that the job satisfaction is reduced or it can be that the employees are unsatisfied with the wages and salaries which has been provided to them. Or there is increase in work. Whatever might be there, but we are unaware, the manager is unaware of the um, uh, um, uh, causes which are creating the absenteeism. So that is something which needs to be addressed. So nature of problem is clear, but the, the information which solves the problem is not clear. So uh, the types of researches um, uh, are required because uh, a business used to face multiple kinds of scenarios at one time. So in order to... Um, analyze these scenarios, uh, a researcher has to be very much aware that which type of uh, categories used to exist in uh, the research methodology. So if he is aware that which type of uh, methodologies and areas are there, he will be uh, putting the problem into the specific categories and then analyzing them in, in the right way. So uh, because of variety of research activity, it will be helpful to categorize the business research. ضروری ہے کہ ہم بزنس ریسرچ کو کٹیگرائز کر دیں کیونکہ ہمارے پاس بہت ڈائنامک انوائیمنٹ ہے اور اس ڈائنامک انوائیمنٹ میں ہمارے پاس ملٹپل قسم کے پرابلمز ایکزسٹ کر سکتے ہیں تو ان پرابلمز کو رائٹلی ایڈرس کرنے کے لیے ہمیں اپنی بزنس کو تھوڑا زیادہ ریسرچ کو مزید ایکسپلین کرنا چاہیے مزید ڈیفائن کرنا چاہیے جس کی بزنس کے اوپر ہم پرابلم کی نیچر کی بزنس کے اوپر اس کو رائٹ کٹیگری میں فکس کریں اور اس کے اوپر رائٹ ٹیکنیک سپلائے کر کے سلوشن کراس کریں تاکہ ہمارے پاس جو آلٹرنیٹیوز کا سیٹ جنریٹ ہو اس میں وہ آپشنز ایکزسٹ کرتی ہوں جو کہ بزنس کے لیے واقعی ورڈ سیکنگ ہے Secondly, uh, the importance of business research uh, is required because it identifies the techniques and functions for the research. So business research is uh, defined in this way so that we can know which specific techniques and which functions we want to acquire from research. So uh, in order to know the techniques, we are focusing towards the uh, experiments and surveys and observational studies which are uh, the general and modernized common techniques on the basis of which we can take uh, the data. Secondly, if we are talking about the function, so uh, the classification on the basis of function allow us to understand how nature of problem influences the choice of research methods. So, 
جب ہم نے ٹیکنیکس کو ڈیفائن کرنا ہے تو ہم نے وہ میتھرز ڈسکرائب کرنا ہے جس کی بیجو ایسیز کے اوپر ہم ریسرچ کنڈیکٹ کریں گے اور فنکشنز میں ہم بیسیکلی ڈسکرائب کرتے ہیں کہ نیچر آف پرابلم کیا ہے اور وہ ہمارے ریسرچ میتھرز کو کس طرح سے ایفیکٹ کر رہی ہے سو وین وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دی ٹیکنیکس اینڈ فنکشن سائملٹینیسلی وی آر ایبل ٹو ڈسکرائب ناٹ اونلی دی پرابلم اینڈ اٹس نیچر اٹس آبجیکٹس بٹ آلسو دی رائٹ میتھڈالوجی ٹو ورڈس ڈسکرائبنگ دی ٹیکنیکس آف ڈیٹا کلیکشن اینڈ انٹرپریٹنگ دیم سو دی نیچر آف پرابلم انڈیکیٹس ایف اٹ از ایکسپلوریٹری ریسرچ or descriptive research or causal research. So there exist basically three types of or three categories of research which are exploratory at first, then the descriptive, secondly, and then causal. This is not casual, this is causal. Because uh, we are about to create or we want to know the cause and effect relationship between the variables. So what is it? We will be uh, coming in a, in a moment towards that slide and then discussing the causal. But um, the point here is to remember that this is not casual, this is causal. Because usually the students get troubled that uh, if research is very much casual, then why, why it is need to be conducted? So this is causal, not the casual one. So uh, going through in the detail of exploratory study. So exploratory study uh, basically uh, provides the uh, initial research which clarify and defines the problem. So whenever we are in a situation to um, describe that what is actually the nature of the problem, we are conducting exploratory research. Now as it is very much uh, clear from the term that exploratory is something in which we are uh, digging down the details of. When the researcher is interested in knowing that what might be the um, uh, areas which affect the problem. So the problem lies on the surface and the researcher is exploring the depth of it. The researcher wants to analyze that how deep the problem exists. So if he is digging down the details of the problem, he might be coming up with multiple issues, with multiple areas which are definitely related with the surface problem but uh, holding their depth inside. So the depth is not clear uh, as far as the researcher is, uh, uh, research, researchers know the problem. So we are comparatively unaware or we are comparatively, uh, comparatively ambiguous in order to identify the nature of the problem. So whenever we are addressing the uh, nature of the problem and whenever we are trying to fix that what might be included in this specific area uh, of uh, uh, problem statement, we are basically defining the problem. So once we are defining the problem, we have to focus on this particular area کتنے یا کون کون سے فیکٹرز جو ہیں وہ اسوسییٹڈ ہیں یا کون کون سے فیکٹرز ریلیٹڈ ہیں اگر ہمیں یہ پتا ہو کہ کون کون سے فیکٹرز اس میں ریلیٹڈ ہیں تو ہم ان کو سالف کرنے کے لیے یا ان کا جو مارجن آف ایفیکٹ ہے اس کو بھی انیلائز کر سکتے ہیں لیکن اگر ہمیں یہی نہیں پتا کہ اس میں کون سے فیکٹرز افیکٹ کر رہے ہیں اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ ہماری نیچر آف پرابلم is not described so far سو اس کی ڈسکرپشن جو ہے وہ بہت ضروری ہے so if we are conducting an exploratory study, we are basically defining the problem statement and defining the pro nature of the problem. And in this uh, definition, in this um, um, in description of uh, uh, defining the problem statement or the nature of the problem, we are pinpointing all the underlying factors which might affect the surface problem. So uh, that is something which is the uh, purpose of conducting uh, exploratory study that we are describing the nature of problems in all possible areas which might affect it. Now for example, if we consider the previous example, we know that we know that productivity is reduced or that productivity is affected لیکن اور ہم یہ بھی پتہ ہے کہ وہ ابسنٹیزم کی وجہ سے ہو رہی ہے but we are not aware of the causes of ابسنٹیزم so in that case we want to know that what might be the causes of ابسنٹیزم تو ہم جنرلائز سب سے پہلے کریں گے کہ ابسنٹیزم کن کن وجوہات کی بنیاد کی اوپر ہوتا ہے وہ کون سے specific reasons ہیں جو کہ cause کرتے ہیں ابسنٹیزم کو اور اس ابسنٹیزم میں particularly ایک organization کے perspective میں ایک productive پروڈکٹیوٹی ہاؤس کی کورسپونڈنس میں کون کون سے ایڈیاز جو ہیں وہ ریلیٹ کر سکتے ہیں تو جب ہم اپنی پرابلم کو ڈسکرائب کر رہے ہیں جب ہم اپنی پرابلم کو سٹیٹ کر رہے ہیں تو وہاں پر ہم نے بیسیکلی آئیڈنٹیفائی کیے ہیں 
وہ سارے کے سارے فیکٹرز جو کیپسنٹیزم کو کاؤس کرتے ہیں تو ہو سکتا ہے کہ ہم ایک ایسی ریسرچ کر رہے ہوں جس میں ہم شاید سلوشن کے پر بات نہیں کر رہے ابھی ہم اس میں یہ ڈسکرائب نہیں کرنا چاہ رہے کہ ایپسینٹیزم کو ہم کیسے ریڈیوز کر سکتے ہیں یا اس پرابلم کو ہم کیسے سالف کر سکتے ہیں ابھی ہم تو ریسرچ کر رہے ہیں اس کا پرپس یہ ہے کہ ہم نے جو پرابلم ہے اس کو ڈیفائن کرنا ہے ابھی ہم نے وہ فیکٹرز انیلائز کرنے ہیں پرابلی ہم لیبر سے پوچھ سکتے ہیں یا ہم کو ورکر سے پوچھ سکتے ہیں یا ہم ایک فوکس گروپ کنڈکٹ کر سکتے ہیں جنرل انٹرویو کر سکتے ہیں اپنے سارے کے سارے امپلائیز کے ساتھ تاکہ ہمیں وہ تمام ایشوز پتہ لگ سکیں جو کہ ایک پرٹیکلر آرگنائزیشن میں ایپسینٹیزم کاؤس کرتے ہیں ہم منیجیرل لیول کے اوپر بھی بات کر سکتے ہیں ہم سپروائزر لیول کے اوپر بھی بات کر سکتے ہیں اور ہم لیبررز کی کلاس کے اندر جا کر بھی بات کر سکتے ہیں تو ان آل دیز کیٹیگریز وی آر جسٹ کلیکٹنگ ان کلیکٹنگ ان کلیکٹنگ انفرمیشن وی آر جسٹ ایڈرسنگ دی پرابلم ان اویگ دیٹ دیز آر دی پوسیبل ایشوز which might create ایپسینٹیزم سو دیٹ از سم تھنگ وچ از دی پرپز آف کریٹنگ کنڈکٹنگ ایکسپلوریٹری اسٹڈی few things which are required to remember in exploratory study is that uh, probably we are not moving towards the solution of the study but we are just to, talking to, about, the, about the nature of the problem we are just describing the situation on the basis of which we are describing uh, the details which might be associated in one particular area of concern so that is the purpose of the exploratory study in which we are uh, digging down the details of the surface problem Uh, the opposite of um, uh, exploratory study is descriptive one. So a research design described, uh, describing the characteristics of population or phenomena are basically uh, the descriptive research. Now um, in exploratory we are digging the details but in descriptive we remain on the surface but describing the entire phenomena of the population. So, or the population. So in that case, we remains on the surface, but on the surface, what is affecting the problem, that is descriptive research. Now, I hope ke ye thoda sa, uh, jo difference hai, wapo clear ho gaya hoga, ki jab hum exploratory ki baat karte hai, to hum un tamam factors ki baat karte hai, jo ke exist karte hai, surface, surface problem ke under, which might cause the surface, pro surface problem. This ka matlab ye hai, ke whatever is lying, inside is having its effect on the major problem so if we are unaware of the nature of the problem we are defining it we are describing it towards the detail ke uske andar kaun kaun se factors shamil ho sakte hain in contrary to that the descriptive uh, research provide us with the set of characteristics aur ek particular problem ke kaun kaun si khususiyat ho sakti hain اس کے کون کون سے میجر امپورٹنٹ ایریاز آف کنسیڈریشن ہو سکتے ہیں یا ہم ایک پرابلم کو کن کن اینگل سے ریڈ کر سکتے ہیں رائٹ تو وہ ہم اینگلز کو اگر انیلائز کرنے کی کوشش کر رہے ہیں یا ہم سرفس پرابلم کو کس طرح سے پاپولیشن کے ساتھ ریلیٹ کر کے کن کن ایریاز کو ہم ایڈرس کر سکتے ہیں that is something which is the domain of descriptive research so basically descriptive research is a kind of technique in which we are describing the characteristics to describe the population or the phenomena کہ اگر ہم نے کسی چیز کو for example اگر ہم نے کسی medicine کے کہ set of ingredients کے بارے میں analyze کرنا ہے کہ اس particular medicine کو کس طرح سے ہم نے compose کیا ہے اس کی composition کیا ہے تو جو بھی pharmacist ہے وہ ہمیں یہ بتا سکتا ہے کہ اس particular medicine کے اندر ہم نے یہ یہ ingredients شامل کی ہیں ان کی یہ یہ quantity ہم نے شامل کی ہے جس کی basis کے اوپر یہ results آ سکتے ہیں so that is something which is describing the nature of or describing the characteristics of the medicine کہ اس کے اندر جتنے بھی ایریاز جتنے بھی انگریڈینٹس کی کمپوزیشن ہے ڈیفنیٹلی اس کی بیسس کے اوپر اس کے ایڈوانٹیجز اور اس کے جو فنکشنز ہیں وہ ڈسکرائب ہوں گے سو that is something in which we are describing the medicine so whenever we are describing the population کہ اس کے اندر اس سیٹ آف پاپولیشن کے اندر کتنے نمبر آف پیپل ایکزسٹ کرتے ہیں ان کی ایج کیا ہے ان کی جنڈر ڈسکرمنیشن کتنی ہے منی میننگ اس کی جنڈر ریشو کتنی ہے اس پرٹیکلر ایریا کے اندر کتنے لوگ لٹریٹ ہیں کتنے لٹریٹ نہیں ہیں اور کتنے لوگ جو ہے کتنے پرسینٹ لوگوں کی پاپولیشن جو ہے which is below 18 years meaning they are coming in the children category 
So if you are describing the population characteristics, कि वो किधर exist करती है, उसकी क्या nature है, उसमें क्या formalities हो सकती हैं उस particular set के अंदर, या उसकी क्या description है, that is something which is known as the descriptive research. That we are interested in knowing the characteristics and major features of the set area or phenomena in which we are interested to conduct research. एक डायग्नोस्टिक एनालिसिस हम डिस्क्रिप्टिव रिसर्च के बात करते हैं जिसका पर्पस ये होता है कि हम हमारे पास दो मुख्तलिफ अगर डेटा सेट्स आ जाएं फॉर एग्जांपल अगर हमने पापुलेशन कोई स्टडी करना है और पापुलेशन के कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स कोई डिफाइन करना है तो उसको राइटली डिफाइन करने के लिए जरूरी है कि हम दो मुख्तलिफ पॉपुलेशन सेट्स को देखें और उन दोनों के अंदर सिमिलर प्लेटफॉर्म्स के ऊपर सिमिलर एरियाज ऑफ जजमेंट के ऊपर हम डेटा को एनालाइज करें और फिर उसको कंपेयर कर लें तो यहाँ पर हम बेसिकली इंश्योर करते हैं एनालिसिस टू वर्ड्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग फाइंडिंग सच एज एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड सच एज एक्सप्लेनेशन रिस्पॉन्डेंट्स गिव फॉर अ बिहेवियर और एटीट्यूड तो अगर हमारे पास दो मुख्तलिफ सेट ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स या दो मुख्तलिफ सेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन एक्जिस्ट करते हैं और उनके यहाँ पर हम एक स्पेसिफिक मेथडोलॉजी के थ्रू डेटा अप्लाई करते हैं तो हमारे पास दो किस्म के रिस्पॉन्सेज आएंगे और उन दो रिस्पॉन्सेज को जब हम इन कंपेरिजन स्टडी करते हैं तो वहां पर हमारे पास डायग्नोस्टिक एनालिसिस आता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी माइंड स्टडी दर्पज ऑफ स्मोकिंग दैट वाई पीपल स्मोक बिलो एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी ईयर्स एंड अब एज ऑफ ट्वेंटी ईयर्स सो हमारे पास इसी एक एक ही पॉपुलेशन जो कि स्मोकर्स की पॉपुलेशन है उसकी दो कैटेगरीज एग्जिस्ट करती हैं वो लोग जो कि बीस साल से छोटे हैं और सिगरेट पीते हैं और वो लोग जो कि बीस साल से बड़े हैं और स्मोकिंग करते हैं तो उन दोनों का जो पर्पस है वो डेफिनेटली डिफरेंट होगा सवाल हमारे पास वही होंगे कि आप कब से सिगरेट पी रहे हैं और क्यों पी रहे हैं और आप कितनी इंटेंसिटी से पीते हैं या कौन कौन सी वजूहत हो सकती हैं जिनकी बिना के ऊपर आप स्मोकिंग करते हैं सो दीज माइंड बी द इश्यूज विच वी वी आर डिस्कसिंग विच वी आर डिस्क्राइबिंग तो जो रिजल्ट्स हमारे पास लेस देन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स के केस में आएंगे डेफिनेटली वो रिजल्ट हमारे पास ग्रेटर देन ट्वेंटी ईयर्स में नहीं आएंगे तो जब हमारे पास दोनों किस्म के रिजल्ट आते हैं उन दोनों को हम साइमल्टेनियसली जब स्टडी करते हैं तो हमारे पास डायग्नोस्टिक एनालिसिस का कॉन्सेप्ट आता है कि हमारे पास पॉपुलेशन वही है लेकिन हम उसको दो कैटेगरीज में डिवाइड करेंगे ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इंटरेस्ट ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ बिहेवियर एंड एटीट्यूड और फिर हम वहां से एक ही टूल के अगेंस्ट एक ही डेटा टेक्निक के अगेंस्ट डेटा कलेक्ट करेंगे और फिर उसको एनालाइज करेंगे ताकि हमारे पास राइट डायग्नोस्टिक एनालिसिस आ सके देन कम्स दर्ड मैथड ऑफ और थर्ड कैटेगरी ऑफ रिसर्च विच इज कॉजल रिसर्च Now in the third category of research, which is causal one, the researcher um, wanted to analyze the relationship or you can say uh, the um, association of two variables on the basis of cause and effect. So if research conducted to identify cause and effect relationship among variables where the research statement has already been defined narrowly, we are actually conducting causal research. So in case of causal research, we are or the researcher is uh, creating an association or a linkage between the variables in a, in a way to study the impact of one variable over another. So if the effect have been uh, studied, this means that or this shows that uh, the, the effect you, does exist. So if the effect exists, is, uh, this means that uh, we, are, we are interested in knowing that is it positive, is it uh, negative or is it creating a kind of, um, uh, you can say, a linear effect. So that is something which is uh, determined through the cause and effect relationship that, uh, for example, we have discussed an example before that uh, the um, cockpit mein crew, the cockpit ka crew, its performance hai, wo affect karti hai, uh, affect hoti hai nervousness ki wajah se. So if they are nervous or uh, to emergency situations ke uh, ya emergency problems ki wajah se, agar wo nervous ho jate hai, cockpit ka crew nervous ho jata hai, to uska matlab ye hai ki unki performance thik nahi hai ya jo results uh, wo show kare honge wo itne reliable nahi hai. To iska matlab ye hai ki nervousness is, uh, is, is creating or is causing um, problem for the cockpit crew. 
in order to generate results on the in the emergency situations so in that case agar hum nervousness ko ek independent variable consider karte hain to phir hum dekh sakte hain ki nervousness ki basis ke upar cockpit crew jo hai wo kis tarah se uski performance affect ho rahi hai but nervousness is again a kind of problem which is not self created it has to be created because of certain issues so what will be these issues these these will also be creating a causal research that what are the issues which create nervousness in the cockpit crew members so that is something uh, which describes the area in which we are interested to conduct causal research agar hum ek combined look dekhein jo set of examples exist karta hai exploratory descriptive or causal research ke andar to agar hum in teeno ko combined look mein study kare aur dekhein ki ye teeno jo hai kis tarah se relate karte hain या किस किस्म के एरियाज को हम एक्सप्लोरेटरी स्टडी की कैटेगरी में फिक्स करते हैं किस किस्म के रिसर्चर्स को हम डिस्क्रिप्टिव की कैटेगरी में प्लेस करते हैं और कौन सी कैटेगराइज होती है कॉजल रिसर्च में सो दीज आर फ्यू एग्जांपल्स व्हिच डिस्क्राइब्स ईच प्लेटफॉर्म और ईच कैटेगरी इन डिटेल सो इन एक्सप्लोरेटरी केस दबसेंटिज्म इज इंक्रीजिंग एंड वी डोंट नो वाई so if we are interested in knowing all the factors which are affecting uh, which are creating uh, absenteeism that is something which is the domain of exploratory research secondly would people be interested in our new product idea that if we are launching a new product idea will people buy it or not buy it so that is something which is the domain of exploratory study that which factors will let people to buy a product and which will hinder in their consumption pattern that is something which is the um, exploratory study what should be the specific leadership traits which solve problems of our labor union ki agar hamari labor union ke andar koi problems aa rahe hain to hame specifically kaun kaun se traits chahiye honge apne supervisors ke andar ya kaun kaun se managerial elements hame chahiye honge apne effective management ke andar jo ki hamare labor issues ko reduce kar sake so these are the factors in which we are interested in knowing but these are not um, presented to us so these are not clear to us so for that we will be collecting some data so that is something which will be the area of uh, exploratory study secondly in case of descriptive one what kind of people favor trade protectionism uh, agar humne descriptive uh, case ki baat karni hai to hame yahan par what which factors which affect uh, trade protectionism ki baat nahi karni lekin hame wo uh, wo attitude pata lagana hai logon ka ya wo behavior pata lagana hai logon ka jis jo ke फेवर करते हैं ट्रेड प्रोटेक्शनिज्म को जो कि इन निगेशन और इन एक्सेप्टेंस ट्रेड प्रोटेक्शनिज्म के ऊपर बात करते हैं सो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज इन द डोमेन ऑफ डिस्क्रिप्टिव एरियाज सेकेंड ईयर द लास्ट ईयर प्रोडक्ट सेल अफेक्ट्स कंपनी स्टॉक प्राइस कि जो लास्ट ईयर की सेल हुई थी क्या उससे कंपनी की स्टॉक प्राइस इंक्रीज हुई है या नहीं हुई है सो हियर वी विल बी एनालाइजिंग द कंपनी स्टॉक प्राइस इन अ वे दैट व्हाट इज द रेलेवेंस ऑफ द लास्ट ईयर्स प्रोडक्ट परफॉर्मेंस टुवर्ड्स द स्टॉक प्राइस ऑफ द कंपनी सो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच विल बी डिस्क्राइबिंग द प्रोडक्ट एट्रीब्यूट्स टुवर्ड्स द टुवर्ड्स सेटिंग द स्टॉक प्राइस ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन thirdly uh, people are interested in buying saving certificates from past decade that um, uh, if people are um, motivated in saving their money so the in which formats that is something which is uh, which is the comparison of previous decade with the current one that uh, are people interested in buying saving certificates or not so that is again in the domain of descriptive uh, research then comes the causal technique in which um, which of the two training programs are more effective meaning we are making comparison ke the cause and effect ki relationship aa rahi hai ki training program ki effectiveness ki basis ki wajah ki basis ke upar productivity ya performance jo hai wo increase ho rahi hogi so that is a cause and effect relationship between training and performance then uh, will buyers uh, buy more of our product if we change our packaging so before the change of packaging and after the change of packaging definitely the response of consumers will be affected so the cause and effect relationship will be created on the uh, type of packaging and the consumer response towards the uh, purchases then smoking cause cancer that um, uh, one factor which is cancer can be caused through smoking so that is something which is again a cause and effect relationship uh, and it will be placed in the category of causal research now let's look at the flow chart for the research process now this is a very very interesting area ab yahan par agar hum 
ریسرچ کے پروسس کو جو کہ ہم نے پریویس لیکچر میں ڈسکس کیا تھا اس کو انیلائز کریں تو ہم نے ڈسکرائب کیا تھا ایک سائنٹیفک میکنزم ٹوورڈز دی پرابلم ڈسکرپشن کہ جی پرابلم آئیڈنٹیفائی ہوتی ہے اس سے ریلیٹڈ پریلیمنری ڈیٹا کلیکشن ہوتی ہے اور پھر ہم لیٹریچر ریویو کرتے ہیں اور پرابلم کو فارملائز کرتے ہیں پرابلم سٹیٹمنٹ ڈسکرائب کرتے ہیں تھوریٹیکل فریم ورک بناتے ہیں اور فردر پروسیڈنگز کرتے ہیں یہاں سے اگر ہم اسی چارٹ کو یا اسی پروسس کو تھوڑا سا مائن میں رکھیں تو on the basis of this research design, on the basis of these categories, we fix our research problem in a way that problem discovery and definition is related to problem discovery, problem definition. When we identify problem, we identify problem, we state the problem statement defined in the process, so at that time we follow this methodology that is problem defining and discovery towards the categorization of research. Secondly, when we design research, we talk about the selection of basic research methods. When we have designed the research, what are the specific methodologies or what are the specific methodologies or what are the specific methodologies or what are the specific scientific research methods that we have integrated towards solving our problem area. So, where the problem is discussed, where the problem is addressed, we have to relate to that of the ریسرچ میتھڈ کہ اس پرابلم کی اس پرٹیکلر پرابلم کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم کونسا ریسرچ میتھڈ ڈسکرائب کریں گے اور یہی وہ چیز ہے جو کہ ہم نے یہاں پر بھی آئیڈنٹیفائی کی ہے کہ یہ جو پرابلم ہم نے ڈیفائن کیا ہے اس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم ریسرچ ڈیزائن کنڈکٹ کر رہے ہیں یا ڈیفائن کر رہے ہیں تھرڈ لی جب ہم سیلیکشن کرتے ہیں ریسرچ میتھڈ کی تو اس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم سامپل ڈسکشن کرتے ہیں سامپل ڈیزائن تو یہ تین ایریاز ہمارے پاس میجر کنسیڈریشنز ہو سکتی ہیں ریسرچ کی سب سے پہلا پرابلم ڈیفنیشن سیکنڈلی ریسرچ ڈیزائن اور تھرڈلی سامپلنگ ان کی بیسس کے اوپر جب ہم سامپل ڈیزائن کرتے ہیں تو ہمارا جو پروسس ہے وہ ڈیفنیٹلی انڈر کنسیڈریشن ہوتا ہے اور اس پروسس کو ہم اس طرح سے فلور چارٹ میں ڈسکرائب کر سکتے ہیں that first of all if you are talking about problem discovery تو problem discovery میں ہم جس process کو define کرتے ہیں جس set of activities کو analyze کرتے ہیں this includes selection of exploratory research technique کہ ہم نے exploratory research technique کو identify کیا ہے کو select کیا ہے جس کی basis کے اوپر ہم نے problem کو discover کیا ہے problem کو define کیا ہے جس میں nature of problem کو ہم نے ڈسکس کیا ہے تو یہ ڈومین ہے ایکسپلیریٹری سٹیڈی کا یہ فنکشن ہے ایکسپلیریٹری سٹیڈی کا جس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم سیکنڈری ڈیٹا یا پائلٹ سٹیڈی یا ایکسپیرینس سروے یا کیس سٹیڈی کی بیسس کے اوپر اپنی پرابلم کو ایڈرس کرتے ہیں اپنی پرابلم کو بیسیکلی ڈسکاور کرتے ہیں کہ وہ کون کون سے فیکٹرز ہیں جن کی بیسس کے اوپر یہ پرابلم آرائز ہوا ہے So this particular data can be, this particular area can be analyzed through primary and secondary data, through pilot study, through experience survey and case study. What are they will be covering them in a moment. On the basis of these four areas, we derive a problem definition which actually states the research objectives. Initiate हमने किया था problem discovery से. کہ ہمارا جو function ہے, ہمارا جو مقصد ہے, وہ ہے problem کو discover کرنا. کہ basically problem ہے کیا. اور اس discovery کے اندر we are intending towards the result that which might be the problem statement is. تو اس کے اندر جو process involved ہے وہ exploratory research کا process involved ہے جس کے اندر ہم نے secondary اور primary data کے through یا pilot study کے through یا experience survey میں یا case study method کی basis کے اوپر data کو collect کیا ہے data کو analyze کیا ہے اور پھر ہم نے ایک statement formulate کی ہے which is the problem statement. اب یہ جو problem statement ہمارے پاس formulate ہوئی ہے اس میں اس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم specify کریں گے کہ what will be the research method اور وہ جو research method ہے وہ ہم describe کریں گے کہ وہ یا تو survey ہے in the form of interview and questionnaire or it is an experiment which might be the lab or field or it is collected on the basis of observation or the secondary research so that is something which exposes the research method to us کہ اگر ہم نے یہ problem statement define کی ہے تو اس problem statement کی basis کے اوپر جو research design ہے وہ کیا ہوگا تو research design کو select کرنے کا جو process ہے that holds multiple functions and these functions might be the survey, the experiment, the observation and secondary data ان کی basis کے اوپر ہم 
اس قابل ہوتے ہیں کہ ہم ڈیفائن کر سکیں یا سیلیکٹ کر سکیں اپنا سامپل ڈیزائن نا دس سامپل ڈیزائن is again a process on which we will be identifying that either we are selecting a probability sample or non probability sample سامپل ہمارے پاس کوئی بھی ہو بے شک وہ probability ہے یا وہ non probability ہے ہم نے ڈیٹا بھی کلیکٹ کرنا ہے ہم نے اس کی ایڈیٹنگ اور کوڈنگ بھی کرنی ہے اس کی پروسسنگ بھی کرنی ہے انٹرپیٹیشنز بھی کرنی ہے اور ریپورٹ بھی جنریٹ کرنی ہے سو دیٹ اس سام تھنگ ویچ ان ٹوٹیلٹی کریئٹس دی انٹائر فلو چارٹ کے پرابلم ڈسکور ہم نے یہاں سے کی اور اس کے بعد اندر اینڈ ہم نے ریپورٹ جنریٹ کی سو یہ کمپلیٹ فلو چارٹ ہے جس کے اندر ہم نے تین میجر پروسسز کو ریسرچ کے ڈسکس کیا ہے انیلائز کیا ہے ون ایز دی analyzing the problem statement second is conducting or making the research design uh, and thirdly analyzing the sample uh, area or the sample design on the basis of probability and non-probability sample to collect data to collect to 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 apply codings of the data to interpret this data and uh, come up with certain findings and present these findings in the, in the report so that is something which is the entire flow of uh, uh, the um, research process flow chart of the research process now starting from the problem definition which we have just uh, focused which shows that uh, problem definition is an indication of specific business decision area that will be clarified by answering some research questions now when we are defining a problem we are basically um, clarifying that what are the answers we are looking for uh, from our research uh, questions کہ ہم نے جو ریسرچ کوئسٹنز فارمولیٹ کیے ہیں ان کی بیسس کے اوپر ہمیں کس قسم کا جواب چاہیے ہمیں کس قسم کا ریزلٹ چاہیے ہم کس قسم کی پرابلم کو سالف کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں ہم بیسس کے لیے کس قسم کے آؤٹکمز کے اوپر بات کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں تو یہ وہ چیزیں ہیں جو ہم نے ایڈرس کرنی ہے اپنی پرابلم ڈیفینیشن کے اندر جو کہ ایکسپلوریٹری کے کیس میں ہم ڈسکور کریں گے Then comes the secondary data or the primary and the primary data. Secondary data is the one which is collected previously for some project other than in hand. Now secondary data ko jab hum define karte hain to ye wo set of data hai jo ke um, already uh, exist karta hai uh, uh, market mein maujood hai uh, it is available for use but that particular data is not collected um, uh, for the purpose of the given problem which we are discussing. So although that we are discussing a problem, although we are uh, handling a situation, problematic situation and we are requiring data which is already there, but this already there, their data is not collected, is not um, um, integrated for the purpose of solving the set problem in which we are in. So therefore, like for example, we conduct surveys or we conduct a census. So census provides all the information of uh, the population. So this particular census um, is, is conducted, is, is intended to collect data, is collect, to collect information on the, uh, for some other purpose, for the purpose of combining, for, for the purpose of making uh, might be the economic survey or the uh, statistical analysis of the country or overall uh, analyzing the situation of the country. اور میجرنگ دی فگرز آف دی کنٹری تو اس کیس میں ہم سینسس کو کنڈیکٹ کرتے ہیں which is a very very expensive techniques even at government level لیکن یہ جو سینسس کی کا جو ڈیٹا ہے یہ ہمیں بہت ساری انفرمیشن پروائیڈ کر سکتا ہے regarding our own topic of interest or our own topic of research so اس کیس میں اس طرح سے ہمارے پاس جو ڈیٹا ہے وہ already exist تو کرتا ہے obviously for our field of interest we don't need to conduct census again because this is very very expensive even the countries hain country level ke upar ya government level ke upar bhi har saal census nahi ho sakta kyunki usme bahut expenses required hote hain so ek individual jo ke research karna cha raha hai ya ek organization jo ke independently research karna cha rahi hai wo census to create nahi karegi conduct nahi karegi wo pure mulk se information to nahi legi lekin wo already جس گورننگ باڈی نے کنڈکٹ کیا ہے وہاں سے وہ انفرمیشن ضرور لے سکتی ہے سو دیٹ پرٹیکولر ڈیٹا ڈیفینیٹلی ڈو ایکزسٹ بٹ دس ڈیٹا از ناٹ کلیکٹڈ ٹو ایڈریس دی پرابلم ان وچ وی آر کرنٹلی ان سو دیٹ از سم تھنگ وچ از دی ڈومین آف سیکنڈری ڈیٹا دیٹ ڈیٹا ڈو ایکزسٹ بٹ دس از ناٹ بین ایڈریسڈ ان اے سملر وے ایز وی وانٹ ایڈ ٹو بی ایڈریس ایز وی وانٹ از ٹو بی ٹو بی نیڈیڈ ٹو بی یوزڈ Then comes the primary data, uh, which is uh, the assembling of uh, data for the specified purpose. 
so uh, if if you are if you are interested in knowing a problem if you are interested in analyzing a problem with our own perspective with our own area of population with our own sample size so for that purpose uh, definitely the data will not be existing so for this uh, we have to collect data on our own and we have to interpret the results on uh, our own uh, so that is why we are taking care on the uh, on assembling those parts of the data which are collected for satisfying the specific problem of interest. Then comes the pilot study, another uh, area of consideration which we have just seen in the flow chart. Uh, pilot study is a kind of um, uh, study which is conducted superficially. Yeah, this ki basis ke upar hum future research kar sakte hain. This ke andar bahut zyada reliable data maujood nahi hota, lekin ek general picture research ki clear hui bhi hoti hai. Ke pilot study se hume ye pata lagta hai, ya jis hum kehte hain ki superficial survey se. हमें ये चीज पता लगती है कि इस पर्टिकुलर फील्ड के अंदर रिसर्च मार्जिन है या ये पर्टिकुलर फील्ड जो है इसको हमें एड्रेस करना चाहिए रिसर्च के अंदर तो दैट इज एक्चुअली दी पायलट स्टडी सो एनी स्मॉल स्केल एक्सप्लोरेटरी स्टडी रिसर्च टेक्निक दैट यूजेस सैंपलिंग बट डज नॉट अप्लाई रेगुलर स्टैंडर्ड इज इज एक्चुअली डिफाइंड दी पायलट स्टडी اس کے اندر definitely ایک sample بھی ہوگا ایک general سی research بھی conduct ہوئی بھی ہوگی لیکن جو data outcomes ہوں گے وہ reliable نہیں ہوں گے اس لیے کیونکہ ہم نے ایک superficial identification of problem کیا ہے کہ جی اس particular field کے اندر research ہونی چاہیے اس لیے کیونکہ یہاں پر اتنا margin exist کرتا ہے اتنا gap exist کرتا ہے یہاں پر problems exist کر سکتی ہیں جس کو ہمیں address کرنا چاہیے so that is a pilot study it serves as a guide for the larger study it is comparatively an informal uh, type of research and it lacks in precision. So on the basis of pilot study, we should not conclude anything because that lacks precision and accuracy. Uh, but on the basis of pilot study, we can um, identify those areas on the basis of which uh, there can be an extensive work conducted in future. So uh, pilot study just is just a hint, it's just a kind of cue which provides a kind of um, support a confidence that this area can be addressed in future research. Then comes uh, the survey and experiment. In uh, survey, most, uh, which is the most common method of generating primary data, uh, we talk about that we are conducting, uh, we are analyzing a population on, uh, on its own and on the basis of questionnaire or interviews, we are collecting information from the people or the respondents. So we are basically talking about survey. Survey is a method of collecting primary data and uh, this technique is uh, usually applied once we are uh, taking care of a situation in which the data won't exist. So we talk about um, the problem, uh, we talk about the people's responses um, pertaining to a particular situation uh, on spot. So that becomes a survey. For example, if we mall intercept a mall, or we go to a specific mall and ask people why you are buying this particular product, when there are other products in the market, on the shelf, so what is the reason for buying this particular product? So basically, we are doing a survey. And if we match the results that there are different malls, like utility store, or uh, best price uh, shop hai ya harolds hai ya koi aise units hai jin jo ke uh, key units hai shopping areas ke ya malls ke to wahan se agar hum uh, ya metro hai to agar hum in sab ki studies ko combine kare to hume pata lagega ke logo ka response ek particular product ki purchase ki taraf kyun hai so humne ye uh, data collect kiya hai on the basis of survey jo ke humne field se ja kar uh, analyze kiya hai humne kisi contrived environment ke andar nahi liya balki actually Naturally, the environment exists and we have collected data from there and we have collected respondents' issues or their responses. Similarly, we might distribute a questionnaire amongst the concerned or prospective respondents and the respondents' response is through questionnaire we can measure the questionnaire. Secondly, we can interviews or personalized or self-administered interviews we conduct kar sakte hain. جس کے اندر ہم اپنی ایک چھوٹی سی ٹیم بنائے اور اس میں ہم سب پورے سائی کے سائی ٹیم ممبرز کو 
ٹرین کرے کہ وہ انٹرویوئرز سے اس طرح انٹرویوئی سے اس طرح کے کوشچنز پوچھے اور ان کے ریسپونسز کو اس طرح سے میجر کریں سو دیٹ از سیلف ایڈمنسٹرڈ کوشچن انٹرویوز جس کے اندر ہم خود سے جا کر تو لوگوں سے انٹرویوز لے رہے ہیں یا ہمارے اپنے ٹرین لوگ جو ہیں وہ جا کر لوگوں سے انٹرویوز لے رہے ہیں آن اسپاٹ ان فیلڈ تاکہ وہ ہمیں ایگزیکٹ ریسپانس پرووائڈ کر سکیں اور ان کے جو ایٹیٹیوڈس اور بہیویئرز ہیں وہ بھی میجر ہو سکیں بائی دی آئر دی سیلف ریسرچر اور دی پیپل ہو آر ٹرین بائی دا ریسرچرس دین کمس دی یوز آف ایکسپیریمنٹس وچ الاؤ اس ٹو اینالائز دی امپیکٹ آف چینج ان ون ویریبل اوور این ادر جب ہم ایک بہت ریسٹرکٹیڈ سی انوائرمنٹ کے اندر اپنے اپنے سروے کو یا اپنے ریزلٹس کو اینالائز کرنے کی کوشش کرتے ہیں اپنے ریسپانس چیک کرتے ہیں کہ ایک بہت چھوٹے فگر کے اوپر ایک بہت چھوٹے سے انوائرمنٹ کے اندر جہاں بہت ساری چیزیں کنٹرول ہیں ایک کنٹرول سی انوائرمنٹ کے اندر ہم ایک ایکسپیریمنٹ رن کرتے ہیں اور ایک ٹیکنیک اپلائی کرتے ہیں کہ افیکٹ آف ون ویریبل اینالائز کرتے ہیں دوسرے کے اوپر تو وہاں پر بیسیکلی ہم نان کنٹریبڈ انوائرمنٹ کی بات کرتے ہیں کنٹرول انوائرمنٹ کی بات کرتے ہیں ہم نے بہت سارے فیکٹرز کو کنٹرول کر کے رکھا ہوا ہے اور اس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم ریسپانسز اینالائز کر رہے ہیں فار ایگزامپل ہم نے چار چھ ریسپونڈنٹس کو ایک کمرے میں بٹھایا ہوا ہے ان کو اچھی سی انوائرمنٹ پرووائڈ کی ہوئی ہے ویدر فرینڈلی انوائرمنٹ پرووائڈ کی ہوئی ہے اور اس کی بیسس کے اوپر ہم ان سے کسی ایک خاص ایشو کے بارے میں سوالات پوچھتے ہیں جو کہ ہو سکتا ہے ان کا ریسپانس اس کمرے سے باہر آنے کے بعد چینج ہو جائے یا ہو سکتا ہے کہ ہم ان کے جوابات کی بیسس کے اوپر فیوچر میں اپنا ایک نیا پروڈکٹ بنانے کے اوپر غور کر سکیں سو دیٹ بیکمس این ایکسپیریمنٹ بالکل اسی طرح سے جس طرح سے ہم لیب کے اندر کچھ ایکسپیریمنٹس رن کرتے ہیں کچھ کمپوزیشنس کو کمبائن کرتے ہیں اور ان کا ریزلٹس اینیملس کے اوپر مانیٹر کرتے ہیں اور پھر ان میڈیسنس کو ہیومن باڈیز کے اوپر اپلائی کرتے ہیں سو دیٹ از دا ریزلٹ آف ایکسپیریمنٹس سو دس از کنڈکٹڈ ان کنٹرول انوائرمنٹ اینڈ ریزلٹس آر ریسٹرکٹیڈ ان گیون کنڈیشن دیٹ انکلوڈ اسمال نمبر آف آئٹمس اور دیٹ یوز از پارٹس آف پاپولیشن ٹو میک کنکلوژنس ریگارڈنگ ہول پاپولیشن از نون ایز سامپل سو سامپل کے کیس میں ایف وی آر انٹرسٹیڈ ان نوئنگ دیٹ ویدر دس فوڈ فوڈ از ہیونگ ایکوریٹ سالٹ اینڈ پیپر ان اٹ سو فار دس وی آر ناٹ ٹیسٹنگ دی انٹائر اماؤنٹ آف فوڈ وچ از کوکڈ but just a spoonful of that. So that spoonful of that actually holds uh, the similar characteristics of population in which we are interested to know. So that uh, area or that spoonful of is the sample of the entire population or entire food which is cooking. So uh, sample is basically subs is a subset of population which should hold all the possible characteristics of population uh, instead of any biasness which might be there. سو ایک اچھا سامپل وہ ہوگا جو ہمیں ایسٹیمیٹس رائٹ ایسٹیمیٹس پاپولیشن کے پرووائڈ کر سکے جو ہمیں رائٹ کیریکٹرسٹکس پاپولیشن کے ڈیٹرمن کر کے بتا سکے اور جو اگزیکٹلی فائن میتھڈس کے اوپر ہمیں پاپولیشن کو ڈسکرائب کر سکے سو اس کیس میں ہم کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ یہ سامپل ایک اچھا سامپل ہے بے شک وہ پرابیبلٹی کی بیسس کے اوپر کلیکٹ کیا ہے یا وہ نان پرابیبلٹی کی بیسس کے اوپر کلیکٹ کیا ہے لیکن ان دونوں کے اندر ڈیفینیٹلی ہمارے پاس ایک مارجن ہونا چاہیے ایک انٹسپیشن ہونی چاہیے یا ایک ایسٹیمیٹ ہونا چاہیے کہ یہ جو بھی سامپل ہے یہ رائٹ پاپولیشن کو کیریکٹرسٹکس کو ڈسکرائب کر رہا ہے اگر ہم پرابیبلٹی سامپلنگ کو تھوڑا سا ٹچ کریں تو پرابیبلٹی سامپلنگ بسیکلی ہمیں رینڈم سامپلنگ یا سسٹمیٹک سامپلنگ یا کلسٹر سامپلنگ کے فارم میں نظر آتی ہے یا سٹریٹیفائیڈ سامپلنگ کے فارم میں نظر آتی ہے جبکہ نان پرابیبلٹی سامپلنگ is based on judgment, is based on quota اور the snowball approaches on the basis of which we collect data So when we talk about data collection and investigation, uh, data might be collected on primary or secondary basis through questionnaires, interviews, observations, focus groups and empirical work. Now the focus group and empirical work is something which we have not discussed so far. Focus group is the combination of or is the collection of people which are uh, controlled by a moderator and one particular statement is um, Uh, floated in a focus group on which the responses of people are measured or are or basically recorded so on these recorded responses we take uh, certain um, 
uh, response uh, data box and we interpret it and analyze it and come up with certain kinds of conclusions. So that is a focus group which is a source of primary data collection. Empirical work is the work which is uh, uh, the study of previous or the um, uh, historical work which is already conducted and we are taking certain hints and cues from that work so to, to analyze a particular issue or to analyze a particular problem which is um, uh, again comes in the data collection. Then comes the editing and coding of data. Uh, the collected data should be converted into the format of answer to decision making. जब भी हम editing की बात करते हैं, तो हमारे पास जो data आया है, वो questionnaires के through आया है, या interviews के through आया है, या personal uh, personal observation के through आया है, या might be focus group है। अगर वो primary structure में हुआ है, और अगर वो secondary structure में हुआ है, तो वो already वो data है जो कि exist करता था, लेकिन हमने उसको इस तरह से integrate किया है कि हमारी problem rightly address हो जाए। उस data को हमें convert करना चाहिए इस तरह से ताकि वो हमारे लिए a uh, uh, reasonable information uh, provide kar sake. So if uh, we are converting this data to a reasonable information, we are actually uh, decoding the data. So this decoding of data is based on the right encoding. Jab hum data ko through computer or through manual interpretation ya manual uh, tabulation ke through usko hum uh, record karte hai aur us record se uh, specifically mean ya p-value ya standard deviation ya level of variation record karte hai ya correlation or regression ko analyze karte hai to uska matlab ye hai ki humne uh, data ko code kiya hai aur us coding ki basis ke upar humare paas kuch results aaye hai un results ko hum kis tarah se read karenge that will be coding and encoding of data editing ko jab hum address karte hai editing ko jab hum define karte hai to ye wo area hai जहाँ पर हम रिसर्च के अंदर फ्लॉस को या रिसर्च के अंदर उन एरियाज को डिलीट कर देते हैं जहाँ से हमें राइट रिस्पांस नहीं मिला। फॉर एग्जांपल अगर हमारे पास दो तीन दफा भी एक पर्टिकुलर जगह पर क्वेश्चनर मूव करने के बावजूद रिस्पांस नहीं मिला तो हम उस रिस्पांस को वहाँ से ओमिट कर देते हैं। तो जितने भी ओमिशंस और जितने भी लिजिबिलिटी हम डेटा के अंदर क्रिएट करते हैं इन ऑर्डर टू मेक दैट मेक इट वर्थवाइल तो वो एडिटिंग की कैटेगरी में आती है। एडिटिंग के अंदर वो रिस्पांसेस भी हम गायब कर देते हैं, उम्मीद कर देते हैं, जिनका कोई ताल्लुक हमारी रिसर्च से नहीं होता। या इंटरव्यूज के दौरान हो सकता है इंटरव्यूअर ने कुछ ऐसे इश्यूज के ऊपर बात की हो जो हमारी रिसर्च से रिलेटेड नहीं है, तो हम उस केस में उन then uh, a very important area of research is report generation which is a very very formal document and uh, uh, this formal document basically communicates the exact problem as well as its solution to the uh, researcher and to the uh, respondent which is the organization hai, usko, uh, uh, report ki form mein agar hum present karein, puri ki puri research so that is basically our document which is, which is known as report रिपोर्ट के अंदर हम बहुत सारी एजम्पशंस को लिमिटेशंस को भी मेंशन करते हैं जो दिन की बेसिस के ऊपर हमने रिसर्च कंडक्ट की है अगर हमारी रिसर्च के अंदर कुछ ऐसे एरियाज हैं जिनको हम एड्रेस नहीं कर सकते या नहीं कर पाए तो वो हम लिमिटेशंस के अंदर मेंशन करेंगे और कुछ फ्यूचर इंप्लीकेशंस को कुछ फ्यूचर मार्जिनस को भी हम डिस्क्राइब कर देंगे कि ये एरियाज इस पर्टिकुलर रिसर्च की वजह से हमने नोट डाउन किए हैं जिसके ऊपर हम करंट डोमेन के अंदर रिसर्च नहीं कर सके लेकिन हम फ्यूचर के अंदर रिसर्च कर सकते हैं प्लस ये कि हम अपनी रिपोर्ट के अंदर थोड़े से पायलट सर्विस भी प्रोवाइड कर सकते हैं फॉर द फ्यूचर वर्क सेकेंडली द रिपोर्ट शुड होल्ड अ प्रॉपर लैंग्वेज एंड प्रॉपर सीक्वेंस सो दैट इट इज काइंड ऑफ यू कैन से वर्ड सीकिंग डॉक्यूमेंट फॉर द um, reader so that it becomes meaningful to the reader uh, if it is uh, systematic and it is in the right uh, language and right format. Uh, it should comprise of necessary tabulations and charts and graphical analysis so that it provides strong evidence towards the uh, data which you have uh, considered, which you have noticed. It should be easy to understand and interpret. It should not hold those wordings and those uh, jargons which are specified to uh, the given situation, but uh, it has to be very much easy to interpret and easy to analyze towards making judgments. So that is a report generation. Um, 
जब हम पूरे के पूरे रिसर्च प्रोसेस से गुजर रहे होते हैं तो हमें दो तीन एरियाज हैं जिनके ऊपर जो दो तीन ऐसी टर्मिनोलॉजीज हैं जो नजर आती हैं समटाइम्स रिसर्चर्स गेट अ प्रॉब्लम इन आइडेंटिफाइंग अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन रिसर्च प्रोसेस एंड रिसर्च प्रोग्राम सो रिमेंबर दैट रिसर्च इज अ काइंड ऑफ एक्टिविटी विच इज नॉट कंडक्टेड वंस इट इज एन ऑन गोइंग एक्टिविटी इट इज अ कंटिन्यूअल प्रोसेस विच नीड टू बी कैरी ऑन Continue, on continual basis, but it should not be uh, analyzed in one shot. So, जब भी हम research को एक continual process का नाम देते हैं, तो उस case में हम research को एक research process कहते हैं. Research program जो है, वो basically collection होती है बहुत सारे research processes की, uh, which are defined to supply an organization's continual uh, informations needed. एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को मुस्तकिल तौर पे जिस किस्म की इन्फॉर्मेशन की जरूरत पड़ती रहती है वो हमारे रिसर्च प्रोग्राम के अंदर शामिल होती हैं और वो हम मुख्तलिफ टाइम के ऊपर मुख्तलिफ लोगों को असाइन करके कलेक्ट करते हैं सो विच बिकम्स द रिसर्च प्रोसेस सो बेसिकली रिसर्च प्रोसेस एंड रिसर्च प्रोग्राम आर वेरी रिलेटेड टर्मिनोलॉजीज इन विच वी कंडक्ट रिसर्च ऑन कंटिन्यूअल बेसिस इट शुड नॉट बी कंडक्टेड इन वन शॉट so in today's lecture we have uh, analyzed various terminologies and we have discussed these terminologies in details which will be definitely fruitful if you are collecting data and if you are addressing to any particular problem at first we have talked about the categorizations of uh, um, types of research that how many uh, categories are uh, are there in research which are in the form of exploratory descriptive and causal research and uh, then we have also analyzed the certainty and uncertainty situation with reference to the uh, absolute ambiguity that if these kind of areas exist which type of research need to be conducted we have al also analyzed the flow chart uh, on the basis of which we can um, uh, analyze a problem and on the basis of which we address uh, the research um, process we have uh, gone through in detail with the uh, problem definitions uh, with the types of primary and secondary data, uh, the concept of pilot study, research project, research design, and research program. So that is all for today's uh, lecture. And I hope that this particular lecture ke baad aapko uh, idea ho gaya hoga ki kis kisam ki exploratory, uh, descriptive, or causal researches hamare ird gird hoti hui business environment mein nazar aari hoti hai. और हम प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट को बिफोर मूविंग इट टू द हाइपोथेसिस और बिफोर इम्बेडिंग इट टुवर्ड्स द हाइपोथेटिकल स्टेटमेंट एंड टेस्टिफाइड स्टेटमेंट वी शुड नो दैट आर प्रॉब्लम व्हिच इज अबाउट टू बी एड्रेस लाइज इन व्हिच कैटेगरी ऑफ रिसर्च तो ये एक बहुत स्ट्रांग सपोर्ट आपको प्रोवाइड कर देगा फ्यूचर वर्क के लिए फ्यूचर रिसर्च के लिए सो दैट यू आर एबल टू एनालाइज द रिसर्च एरिया इन अ बेटर वे थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस टाइम होप टू मीट यू इन फ्यूचर लेक्चर्स इनशाला थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर पेशेंस ऑफ लिस्निंग अल्लाह हाफिज़